Hi everybody, happy Thursday. You almost made it. It's close to Friday. It's really close to the weekend. And for some people it was a short week, but again, sometimes, sometimes those short weeks seem really long because when you miss a Monday, Tuesday feels like Monday and you're not sure what day it is. So anyway, today is Thursday for those of you that don't know what day it is. Um, and so I had something on my heart today. And again, I always feel like when it's on my heart, there's got to be somebody else that's going through something very similar. And so I just like to be able to share my thoughts with you in the hopes of being able to inspire you. And so um, my thought is like, how did I get here? How did I, um, how did I get here? <laughs> here I am. My son has started his very last semester of high school. And um, I had an opportunity to visit the, um, the the high school, his high school yesterday. And I was talking with a couple of the gals that work in the office there. And I remember it seemed like yesterday where I was standing in the office, crying hysterically, full tears, wondering how I'm going to be able to do this. How am I going to get this child through high school as a solo parent after he lost his father? Here it was, we had all of this time together, um, and it was the three of us because Mike helped you know, full time with Hello Gorgeous. We only had the one child, and so the really great thing about only having one child was we moved around as a unit. We didn't have to divide and conquer. And, um, and all of the sudden, it's his last semester of high school, and I did it, and, but how did I get here? How did I, how did I get from that hysterical woman standing in the office wondering how I could get him through high school to this amazing, incredible young man that has not only survived, but has thrived and hasn't let his circumstances stop him as a, a matter of fact, he's allowed his circumstances to elevate him. And, and so I just, I got to thinking about that and it, what is it, what is it that I had to do in order to get from A to B? One of the things that I did was, um, you know, right after Mike died, I, I couldn't take on the whole world. And I sat down and I, I came up with a two prong approach. And there were just two things that I needed to do. Um, and that was it, two areas of focus. And that was to get my son through high school. But I didn't just want to get him through. I wanted him. And on all of my goal sheets, it says I wanted Seth to have a stellar high school career. That's what I wanted. You know, so many of us, we look back on you know, high school is it. Even the graduation party from high school is much bigger, even though the graduation of a, a, a college graduation is so much of a bigger accomplishment. The high school graduation is the, you know, the bigger deal, the party and and uh, and just the accomplishments that you achieve through that. And so, you know, I, I was thinking about that. So I didn't want Seth just to have a, um, uh, I just didn't want to get him through. I, I want, my goal was for him to have a stellar high school career. That's what I wanted. And the second prong of my two prong approach was to make sure that Hello Gorgeous stayed up and running. You know, you guys have heard me say this over and over again, but Michael absolutely loved Hello Gorgeous. And so that was my job. My job was to make sure that I, that the child was successful more than successful and that the organization was up and running and that it stayed up and running because as i said you know when when things were kind of coming down to the end which i didn't know he grabbed a hold of my hands and he said you have to keep going you have to keep going so now now hello gorgeous is so much more than a mission it's a legacy it's my job to make sure that mike's legacy stays alive through the work that we do helping women with cancer and so again as i stood in that office yesterday i just kept thinking how did i get here how, how did I, how did I manage it? How did I manage to keep the organization going? How did I manage to have this amazing, incredible child of mine have the stellar high school career that I always wanted him to have? And so I think it was a couple of things. Um, maybe this was on my heart because of it being, you know, Monday was Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And, you know, there was a, a quote that he always said that always resonated with me. And that was that you don't have to see the full t staircase. You just have to take the first step. And, and I think that's what it was. I didn't look forward to the high school graduation. I just needed to know, okay, what's the next right thing? That, that was my job on, on both fronts, on Hello Gorgeous front and on the front of raising a child as a solo parent, a high schooler. Just what's the next right step to do, right? So when Seth would get frustrated with me, you know, Trisha realized that, that I would have a bad day and then Seth would have a bad day. And so I tried to manage that as best I could, but there were times where I, 
sometimes I just couldn't help having a bad day. So we, I just knew coming down the pike, it would, his, it would be his bad day. And so there'd be times where he'd get really frustrated with me about something. And I would say, you know what? Stop looking at what we don't have and let's look what we do have right? So that was one of the strategies was, yes, we don't have your dad anymore, and but we're doing okay. And one of the ways that we're doing okay is that I the electric is still on, and there's been food in the refrigerator, and not once have you ever gone to school with dirty clothes, and the car is still running, and we've never run out of gas, and, and all of the things, any repair that's been needed, we've had the money to be able to fix the repair. And so to look at those successes, I think that that's number one, is making sure that you celebrate the successes. And when you celebrate those successes, it makes that first step of the next right thing a little bit easier. That's all I needed to do. So knowing that I wanted Seth to have a stellar high school career, what's the next right thing for me to do? And that was to support him. And so when he played tennis, we made sure we took him back and forth to every tennis practice. And then I became the tennis team mom. And then we started a bowling team at Marion because Seth loved bowling. So we had two gentlemen that have known Seth and Mike that helped me. And we started this bowling team at Marion. And so it was just the next right step. So I was the bowling team mom. And you know, I was being at Marion yesterday at his high school and having these kids come in and, you know, hey, Mrs. B, how's it doing? How's it going? And, you know, all of these kids at the school know who I am. I became that mom that I became that mom that I always wanted to be. I wanted to be that. I wanted to be the cool mom, right? I wanted to be that mom that all the kids knew who I was, right? And that they they knew that that was, you know, actually somebody was running down the hall and they hollered back to Seth, Seth, your mom's here. I wanted to be that mom that always showed up. I wanted to be that mom and not to overcompensate for not having a father, but I just wanted to be that mom that everybody loved and that Seth was proud of. You know, I always said that when Mike was alive, I I never became that lackadaisical wife. Like I always tried to look nice. My hair was always done. My makeup would always done. And Mike, you know, I'd get up with bedhead in the morning and Mike would always say, you're beautiful just the way you are. And I said, I, I understand that. But I did it because I always wanted Mike to say that he was a proud that I was his wife. Not, there wasn't anything I think that I could do that would make him that he wasn't proud. But I did that because I always wanted Mike to be proud that I was his wife. And I do that now because I always want Seth to be proud that I'm his mom. Last week on Friday, I had the opportunity. Seth is part of something called Startup Moxie, which is um, it's a. a it's something that he gets credits for, but it's outside of high school. It's associated with the high school, but it's not at Marion. And so right now the kids are all meeting at Zoom because of COVID. And so I had emailed the um, the leader of the startup Moxie and just said, hey, I don't know if you're looking for speakers, but you know, I can speak to the fact that I was a, the owner of a business in the profit world and the owner of a business in a nonprofit world. And as these kids move forward and start businesses of their own, they need to understand corporate social responsibility and what does that look like? And so it, I, so I, last Friday, that's what I did was I spoke to about 30 high school students and, and I hope that Seth was glad to say that I was his, that's my mom. That's my mom that gets to tell you all these things. That's my mom that, you know, people were in tears and, you know, it, it seemed like it was very inspirational, but the whole reason that I did it and showed up as big as I did was because I wanted my son to be proud. And so, so again, it's free will, Right. I have the choice to do it that way. I have the choice to be there and show up and make my son proud. And I also have the choice not to show up because God gave us free will. There's no reason. And I say this to Seth all the time. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. And I tell Seth, you know what? Nobody would have blamed you had you crawled into bed and pulled the covers over your head and, and stayed there. Nobody would have blamed you because anybody that knew you knew the relationship had with, that you had with your dad. And losing your dad was a very, very, very big blow. But gratefully, that's not what Seth did. Neither one of us did. And you know, I think the really great thing is the fact that we are just moving forward in the same direction. We're just following the path that Mike set up for us. Right. We always knew that that Seth wanted to, you know, that we wanted him to have a good high school career. We know, wanted him to um, be successful. He just got his third um, college acceptance letter. And so the, his dad and I wanted him to go to college. And so all the things that Mike and I talked about, we're able to do it now. But it was all about if I w looked at the big picture, how am I going to afford college? How am I going to afford high school? How can I how can I work and make sure that Seth is where he needs to be? If you let all of that, it's overwhelming sometimes. 
It's overwhelming. And so I just needed to take the next right step. I didn't have to see the full staircase. I just needed to take the next right step. You know, I had the opportunity to, um, Dr. Ansari is my oncologist and I love Dr. Ansari. He always makes me feel like, you know, he's always got time for me. He's always got time to answer my questions. And, um, and I, when I went to his office, I noticed the man is crazy. He competes in Ironman competitions. And the Ironman is like, you are pushing your body to the limits. You are, you swim so many miles and then you run a marathon and then you ride a bike. I think you ride the bike like a hundred and some miles. And when I asked him about it, it takes him 17 hours to complete this race, 17 hours. And I thought, you know, grief is a lot like running an Ironman. A cancer diagnosis is a lot like running an Ironman, right? And so what I said to him is, what do you do when you are in the midst of this race and you feel like giving up and you don't think that you can take the next step and you want to quit? What is it that you tell yourself? And he said, I just worry about the next thing. He said, I don't think about running when I'm swimming and I don't think about bicycling when I'm running. I only think about that one thing. And I set small milestones for myself. I don't think about the finish line. I just think, okay, I'm just gonna make it up to that pole. And then I'm just gonna make it to that next mile marker. And then I'm just gonna make it up to that next hill. Whatever it is, I just take it so that it's just one at a time. And I think that that's how I got here. I think that I didn't worry about his senior year. When we were in, our, in Seth's freshman year, I just worried about his freshman year. What did tennis season look like? What did bowling season look like? How can we stay on top of the grades? What do we need to do? All right, the laundry is caught up. I'm going to the grocery store on Sunday. I'm going to do food prep. Whatever that looks like, I just needed to look at the next right step. And I think that so many of us get overwhelmed because we have a tendency to look at the big picture. And when you see the big picture, you can't see, you know, there's the saying, you can't see the forest through the trees, right? I, I, I think that if you just took the next right step, and, and sometimes you just take the next right step for the moment and you find out that it worked then, but it may not work later on. So for, for instance, you know, in the beginning, I just needed to make sure that there was food in the refrigerator and that my child had a hot meal, whatever that looked like. And I didn't have the wherewithal to cook. I didn't have the wherewithal to, to think about this, you know, certainly not a five course meal or a, a huge menu of some sort. So what I would do is on Sunday was my food prep day and I would make hamburger up and I would throw it in the freezer. So it would be really easy just to defrost. And the child sometimes would have hamburger helper, maybe one or two times a week, but it's what I could do. At that point in time, my goal was just to make sure he had a hot meal. That was it. Now, we were at Friends last summer, <laughs> and I didn't realize that the, he made a comment to the people that were standing there that if I never see Hamburger Helper ever again, it will be too soon. It, during the time, it didn't matter. My goal was just to make sure that he had a hot meal, and that's what I could do in my grief and trying to work and keep everything afloat. That's what I could do. So just because it's what you did then doesn't mean that you always have to do it. It was just an end to a mean, it means at that point in time. But that was my next right step during that time. My next right step was to make sure that I was able to prep the hamburger and to make sure that there was a box of hamburger helper or a frozen pizza, whatever it looked like, so that he had a hot meal. That was all there was to it. So along the fact of just figuring out what your next right step is, it really is having faith. And there are times where I didn't have a lot of faith. I didn't know. Mike and I were married for nine years before we had Seth. I didn't know life without Mike. Seth didn't know his life, obviously, without his dad. And I really had to work hard at the relationship that I have with my son because Mike was the at-home parent. My job was to be in the salon. I worked 12 to 14 hours a day. And that was my job. My job was to be the breadwinner of the family. Mike was the one that made the meals. And, and so I worked and paid the bills. And, and Mike was the one that took care of the house and took care of Seth. And, and it was wonderful. And, and our partnership worked. And I was so grateful for that. But now all of a sudden, I don't have my partner. And so now it's up to me. And so a lot, I, I chant, could I do it? And I really had to work hard on my relationship with my son because I didn't have the relationship with Seth that Mike had with him because I didn't have my, I had a quality relationship with my son 
but it wasn't quantity because I didn't, uh, Mike was the one that was with him all the time. And so I really had to step back and it, it took a lot of faith. It took a lot of faith that I could do it. It took a lot of faith that I could keep the house standing. It took a lot of faith that I could keep the car running. And the biggest thing was I said, I have to keep the child alive. What does that look like? How can I keep the child alive? And so it took faith, but you know what? It didn't take a lot of faith. So Matthew 17, 20 says that if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. So I didn't have to have a lot of faith. I just had to have a little faith. And that's what I did was I just had a faith. And I just knew that the next day I would have the faith that I would have what I need for just that day. I didn't need the faith to know that I needed what I needed a month from now or that I had what I needed from a month from now. All I needed was just what I needed to get through today. And then tomorrow I would wake up and I would have just what I needed to get to, to the next day. And that's how we got here. It wasn't taking the big steps. It was truly just taking the small steps, but doing them consistently and doing them over and over again. And a lot of times it's not the big shifts that have the massive impact. It's the little shifts that you do consistently. You know, for me, it was getting up on Sunday morning, going to seven o'clock mass, and then I went to the grocery store. Without fail, that was my schedule because I knew that worked for me. I, I couldn't do it any other way. I wasn't a Saturday afternoon person. We needed, that's what we needed to do. We would get up Sunday morning. I would go to mass. Seth would come with me. I'd take him home. I'd get my grocery list and I'd go to the grocery store. But I did that consistently. And because of that, there was never a time where my child or any of his friends looked in the refrigerator and there wasn't food. There was always food in the refrigerator. There was always stuff that was there. Seth and I, we have a routine with the laundry. I gather it, I separate it. He takes it downstairs in the basement, washes it, dries it, brings it back up to me. I fold it and put it away. That's our, that's our routine. We didn't deviate from that routine. And because we didn't deviate from that routine, he's always had clean clothes. I've always had clean clothes. We've never run out of socks because there's always enough socks. So I think that those are the things, I think that that's how, that's how I've gotten here. And, and it's not just that I just arrived, I didn't just show up, it was all these little things that we did. And it was the mindset that we did while we did it. It, it wasn't that I, I, I can't do it, I found a way to do it, right? We found a way, no matter what it was. So something, it, it, something simple. You know, when, when Mike was alive, we had a routine and it was that I would get Seth ready upstairs. I'd make sure that he was showered and that he had his clean clothes. And then I would send Seth downstairs to Mike and Mike would fix breakfast. He would make his lunch and then he would take Seth to school and then I would get ready for the day. And that's what we did for years. Well, all of a sudden I didn't have that. And so one of the big things was, especially living in Northern Indiana and the weather and the cold was, well, he would go outside and warm up the car and leave the keys in the car, but didn't worry about it because he was downstairs. Well, I wasn't finished getting ready by the time I, it was time to warm up the car. So we had to find a way. So we got a remote start on the car. Best Christmas present I ever got. Thank you very much. But now I can remote start the car. And the car can be warm for Seth and his friends when I was taking them all to school because that's what it was about. But we find a way. You just have to find a way, whatever it is. And it doesn't have to be anything major. It's just what's the next right step. So that's how I got here. It's not looking at the full staircase. It was just taking that first step, whatever that looks like. It was having faith of a mustard seed. It was just knowing that when I got up tomorrow morning, I would have what I needed to get through that day. And that's all there is to it. And that's how we arrived here. And I'm very, very, very grateful to be in the place that I am and to have the child that I do. Um, again, I, I couldn't be any more proud of him. Um, you know, the first three years, I wanted to make sure that he had a stellar high school career. And this last year is my focus is to make sure that he knows that I'll be okay. Because I don't want him not to do what he knows that he's supposed to do because he's worried about me. And that's the next right step. The next right step is to make sure that Seth knows that his mom will be okay and to give him the confidence that he can go off and that he can go to school where he wants to go to school and not have to worry about his mom. He should worry about his mom bugging him because I am going to do that, but he shouldn't worry about his mom being okay because I'm going to be okay. That's all there is to it. That's the next right step. The next right step is for me to be okay. So that's how I got here. You just take the next step without seeing the full staircase and you just need faith of a mustard seed and that's it. So I hope that spoke to you the way that it spoke to me. 
Um, if you've got any hints and tips on how, how to better take care of a child as a solo parent, I, I'm all for any, um, any help or any advice that you can give me. So I hope that you have a great Thursday and we'll talk to you soon. Have a good day.